You're welcome back. Glad to know you're still there. If you were just joining us, this is News Hub showing live on Silverbird Television and Silverbird News 24. Um, our, our conversation will move right now to the issue on ground, which is the resignation or the, the, uh, the instruction, the directive from the president uh, that every political appointee who is vying for an elective position would have to resign 30 days before uh, before uh, the ele uh, before the, the election, so uh, we are asking questions, right? And what is the implication of this on governance? We have IOB who will be doing uh, justice to that particular subject matter. IOB is a legal practitioner and a regular analyst on Friday here in News Up. Good morning, IO. Thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, good morning, Wesley. How are you? Very well, thank you. But let's first of all get your reaction to the very recent uh, judgment by the Supreme Court on, you know, on the matter. A judgment by the Supreme Court? I'm, I'm not aware of it. What I know is that the um, Court of Appeal had said that the decision of the Federal High Court in respect of the um, the validity or constitutionality of Section 84.1 of the Electoral Act um, was a matter that the plaintiff who brought the matter to court was not, um, had no interest in. And um, so I, I'm, I'm not aware of a, a Supreme Court decision, um, but that the Court of Appeal has also said that if at all somebody had um, local standby to bring the, the case, that the section is um, incompatible with the section, um, or with, with, with the constitutional provision that allows a person to remain in office up to 30 days before they are, um, before the election. Absolutely, IOB, thank you so much for that. It's actually uh, uh, the Court of Appeal, David. Yes, I uh, I'm still staying with the, the conversation around the, the, appeal, the appeal court's um, opposition. It, is, it seems to be like a struggle between the Constitution and the Electoral Act here. Um, let me get your interpretation of exactly what the Electoral Act says and what the Constitution also says. Sorry. Yes. David, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you can't get my interpretation or, or my comments in, on, on, on those matters, partly because they are before the court and partly because there are, there are different interpretations which have equal validity in terms of the reasonableness, the, um, the, the, the legal arguability of those provisions. And therefore, it really doesn't help for me to say, well, I think this is right or that, that is wrong. And, and I think also, to be frank, that the issue here goes beyond the question of the legality of section 84 or section um or the constitutional provision which says that you must resign 30 days before um an election if you are a public officer and and, and because because it is um we, we can talk legality all we like at the end of the day we will find that the courts will decide one way or the other what we are faced with now is the fact that there is a presidential directive which says that um, uh, those who are political appointees should resign from their, um, who, who are um, appointed by the, 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 the political appointees should resign by Monday. Um, uh, now we've seen some ministers doing that. And um, I think that's where the issue, issue is at, at the moment because we are, we, are, we are left waiting for the courts. And um, I know that some of those who would be affected if the party, the, their political party, were to exclude them from candidacy. And I know all the talk is about um, uh, all progressive Congress, but the reality is that there are, others, um, there are other parties which, um, to which people might want to be um, for which people might want to be candidates who might also be affected so we shouldn't um, act particularly as um, um Busari was saying just just um earlier about the issue of people jumping from one party to another so we we, we shouldn't assume that it is only um, the ruling party whose candidates are going to be affected if people want to jump from the ruling party where they think they don't have much choice into 
another of the parties, whether it's the main opposition party or parties like the Social Democratic Party or Progressive Grand Alliance and so on, um, or Democratic Congress, you, 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 you can, um, they, they could all be affected if there's an influx of people, um, of, of aspirants seeking for a home. So, that, so everybody could be affected. And I think that um, that's really where the, the issue is, because at the end of the day, while the question is still before the court, every political party has to ask itself, do we want to be saddled the candidate whose lawful or legal capacity or authority to stand as our candidate is in question? would might be swept away at the last minute and um, then we'll be left with no candidate. APC had suffered from that a lot um, because they, they saw what happened to them in Bielsa, they saw what happened to them in Riverside, they saw what happened to them in Zamfara State. So they, they would know that the courts don't joke with this sort of, um, with this sort of thing. And so it's a question, and, and, and I, I suspect that that may be part of the reasoning behind the president's um, saying that, look, uh, let it be clear, if you are running for office, you, you, should, you should resign so that we don't find ourselves having to deal with this legal issue about which, as I said, there are arguments for and there are arguments against, and the courts have not yet landed finally. And by the time the courts land finally, it could be too late for us to um, uh, to adjust our petition. And that is why I think that um, you will find that um, however much we can talk about what the Act says and what the Constitution says, as, on, as we have done before, at the end of the day, we are in a real world where there is a, an electoral timetable and, there, and, and it's ticking, it's already ticking and um, people have to make political decisions um, based on what they think are their chances and what their party thinks are their chances. Absolutely, Ayo. I mean, every, every, every of the political parties involved now would want to, as much as possible, put themselves in the right direction so nothing goes against them. But there is this concern that individuals who are actually paid by the government to carry X responsibilities are dumping those responsibilities to go around campaigning at the expense of the people. Um, I mean, talk to us about th that implication on, on the jobs that should be done that are left abandoned. Well, I think that, um, because I've heard people saying that, well, that when the president was elected in 2015, he, um, he, he governed for six months without ministers. And we even have some state governors who feel that the appointment of um, commissioners is an optional extra and so on and so forth. But the reality is that you as a, you cannot do everything as the chief executive, as um, Silverbird likes to call it. You can't do everything in, in your government. You have to delegate. And the question is, are you delegating to people who are ready to take old decisions and make um, um, uh, possibly controversial um, calls on certain matters? Or are you going to leave it in the hands of civil servants and people who um, uh, we say, well, uh, we, we, we're just going to um, uh, tick the boxes that need to be ticked and everything else will have to wait. So I think that the idea that leaving um, governance um, uh, and, and not filling um, posts is um, already a question mark. Then there's a point that you raised, Matthew, which is about whether somebody can effectively campaign and at the same time be a, um, a, a a minister or commissioner um, and and um, because we know that the situation if you are an elected officer such as a governor a deputy governor a president or a vice president you are you are um, able to campaign um, so we know that you can be in office and you can still campaign and um, incidentally, it has to be emphasized because many people seem to be confused. It needs to be emphasized that people who are elected are not affected by this regulation. So if you are an elected person, governor, senator, um, vice president, 
deputy governor, member of the House of Reps. You don't have to resign from being such person before you um, uh, can campaign to be re-elected or to be elected. And the same thing um, goes, and that, and that applies whether you are a member of the legislature or whether you are a member of the executive. You, you are, are free to remain in, on, 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 on seat. And therefore, I think that we, um, when we look at it, we can see that there, there will be a reason why people will be saying, well, if, 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 a, if a president or a governor or a vice president or a deputy governor can continue to do their job as an executive um, member of the executive, why is it that um, ministers um, who are also members of the executive or other leaders of um, uh, ministries, departments, and um, agencies, why why shouldn't they also be free to do what they want to do um, in terms of being an aspirant and campaigning? But I think that um, we need to recognize that an, a, a situation that is not ideal should not be spread to make it um, the norm. We, we know that we have a situation where um, the where I put it where where the elected members can continue to be in office and can con continue to campaign, and we know also that they do use the, um, the the accoutrements of their office for the purposes of their campaign. However, I, I would say that um, what, what do I put it? I mean, because whenever this happens, and and I don't always like to refer to the United States. Um, because our system is different. Um, but I would nonetheless draw attention to the, the rule that you have in the United States, which is that um, if you are the president or the vice president and you have official duties and your calendar just happens to take you to all those um, official duties where you also have some political side business to, con to conduct, nonetheless, if you are um, on that official duty, when the official part of your duty ends, you have to pay for the additional cost associated with your non-official duties, whether it's visiting your mom in, uh, at, at home because you happen to be in your home state, or whether it is um, meeting your party delegates and um, just saying, well, I'm here, you know, I'm running for office and so on so it is um it, it's not um so, so that even the issue of those who are entitled to remain in office and using the accoutrements of the office for the campaign is already something that we we, we we don't manage very well and something that we need to get a better handle on not to talk of people who are appointed by the president to um head certain agencies and ministries now remaining and then also arranging their calendar so that it allows them to combine campaign with um with their official duties as i said it's not that i think that they're incapable of carrying out their official duties at the same time as they are doing um, some kind of campaigning but i don't think it is ideal and therefore, I, and, and particularly because we don't have this way of separating what is official, what is spent on official business from what is spent on private or political business, then I think that we need to, um, to, to, to draw the line as, 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 as close to where it can be drawn as possible. And for that reason, I would say that it is not ideal. Um, it is not ideal for us to treat the position of minister as an optional extra, the position of commissioner as an optional extra that the country can manage without. The country does not manage well when people who need to take difficult decisions are um, either not in office or, and, or they have resigned and their positions have not been filled or they are um, their, their mind is elsewhere or rather they are taking decisions with a view to how does it benefit me now at this point point of my political need. All right, Ayo, let's, uh, let's look at it from this perspective. Why would you think it is uh, 
difficult for uh, political appointees uh, to do the appropriate thing. Uh, could this be because uh, uh, they, they, they are misinterpreting the Constitution as against the Electoral Act? Are they taking advantage of what seems to be like a controversy between the Electoral Act and um, the Constitution? Because like you did say, I would have just thought that um, the appropriate thing for them to do would, um, you know, hand over. Uh, the, the president had to step in, and I was also want to believe that the president is hinging his decision on the current position of the appeal court uh, to give that instruction. Because before now, uh, the presidency was more or less like just uh, watching uh, the ministers um, uh, do their thing. Uh, it was after the appeal court's uh, position that the president came out strong and said, you all must um, resign uh, before uh, the 16th of, um, of, of, of May. Why was it so difficult for these ministers to just do the appropriate thing? Well, I, I, I think that, um, and, and this is why they did, as I said, I think it's, it, it's, it's a moral issue. It's an issue of, 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 of integrity because um, the ministers would not want to leave certainty for uncertainty. We know that if there are 27 of you who are running for office, if you understand me, then you will not... Um, you, only one of you is going to win that position and 27 and 26 of you are not and therefore you um, you, you, you've already um, if, if being a minister is um, an important part of your your financial or your economic or your social life then you may not want to give that up in order if, 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 if it's not absolutely necessary Nonetheless, you know very well that even if you are a minister who is um, not running, not asked to resign, your term of office is coming to an end next, at the end of next May anyway. So you should already be preparing your post-ministerial, post-commissionorial -commission, life so that you, you have something else to do rather than clinging um, in an unseemly way to, um, uh, to, to office. But as I said, I, I think that, um, I, I, I mean, I can't say why they found it difficult. I can see why they found it convenient to remain in position. But I can see, but, but to me, I think that when you have a situation where people are, um, I mean, uh, we, we just, we just have to look at the position of the Attorney General. People are suing the federal government for, um, and, and he's their representative in some of these cases, over this very issue <clears throat> of interpretation of, of the legal position. And what you find is that um, the Attorney General is going there and um, responding to the cases that are being brought. And many people would have their question about the quality of the representation given to the federal government or given um, on behalf of the federal government on some of these legal issues and whether or not the desire of the, the political ambitions of an attorney general are not um, uh, having some um, color, adding some coloration to the way that the government's position is being presented in court. I, I, I would say that um, in one of the phrases that I rely on a lot when I'm looking at politics, both in Nigeria and in the world, is that in politics, the appearance is as important as the reality. Um, so that whether or not something is a fact, whether or not something is being skewed and so on, the issue is what does it look like to the people who are not inside the room where, or inside your head when you're making these decisions? And I think that um, to the extent that we on the outside can only look and see how does this um, how does this look. Then you you ought to have a better appreciation and understanding of the appearance, the perception that people will have. Unfortunately, that is not so. I mean, I'm sure you would have been surprised to hear the um, governor of the central bank. 
um, joking about the fact that some people are having heart attack over the question of whether or not he's going to be a candidate. And um, well, I appreciate that there may be an attempt to lighten the tension, to, um, to lighten the atmosphere and release some of the tension on these matters. But there are some things that um, perhaps are not proper subjects for, for jokes and lightheartedness. Um, people are having heart attacks because there will be free, free, in the first place, there'll be that feeling that somebody in that position will not even consider this unless they have some very sure pointers, some, that they, unless they feel very certain about what, 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 what is going to happen. So they're automatically, because of that perception, will come, has the president been giving some assurances or not? And then others will be um, saying that, we remember in 2015, there was a dollar rain and people were wondering where the dollars were coming from. It's a question. The perception again will be, will be coloring the reality or um, uh, what people will, how people will interpret um, actions. So I think that um, we can't afford this kind of uncertainty. Um, I appreciate that there are some political or some people who are appointed by the government who, um, if the president asks them to resign, they don't have a choice. There are others who the president, if he asks them to resign, they cannot. Um, they, they can say, "Well, I, I don't. Um, I don't. I don't want to resign. I'm not going to resign." And um, do your worst. And um, uh, certainly, somebody like the, um, uh, the governor of the central bank is, 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 is in that position. But we also um, are having heart attack because we know that electoral materials are kept by the central bank of Nigeria on the eve of elections. And however much we may feel that, uh, that this, the, the, the INEC officials will also be there guarding their materials and so on and so forth. Even basic things like, can we open the vaults and get our materials? These are all uh, matters that people don't want to be left questioning and having doubts about. And we can always stand on the legal position and um, uh, what, 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 what we can do by force of law. But we also need to remember that this is a fragile union that we are holding together. We shouldn't be doing things that, um, how do I put it? We shouldn't be doing things that make it, um, that, that, that add to the fragility of, of, of this enterprise called the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So much, Ayobi. We had more questions to ask, but for the sake of time, we have to end the conversation here, hoping that uh, you know people that are putting several response, uh, several positions do actually what they need to do to ensure that the nation becomes better. Thank you always for your lightning conversation, Ayobi. Thank you very much. All right, let's go for a short break, and when we come back, the conversation continues. Stay with us.